Hello and welcome to this session on self-motivation for teachers. Who doesn't require motivation? Everyone, students, teachers, everyone requires motivation. And motivation works wonders, isn't it? We have seen it in our classrooms. When we motivate students, they do so well. And the same goes for teachers. And unfortunately, there are many teachers who tell that they don't get the correct mentors or they don't get motivated by someone who is working with them or there is so much competition among the teachers in some schools that they don't motivate each other. So it is important in these circumstances that we do not become stagnant. We need to become like flowing water, always fresh with ideas, active and passionate about our teaching. And therefore, if nobody motivates, it is important to self-motivate ourselves so that we don't stagnate and become dead, right? It's important that we become lively. It is important that this self-motivation is generated. Otherwise, what happens? Deterioration. There is no progress. Progress happens when there is change. Progress happens when there is either motivation externally or you are able to motivate yourself to perform better. So today's session is basically for people who are not motivated by others. So I am telling you that we need to self-motivate ourselves so that we can do much better in the work that we are doing in our workplaces and our output, output becomes much higher than what is even expected out of us. We need to do more than what is expected out of us. And this session is basically a booster for those who fe are feeling low in their profession. So many times we are bogged down by our responsibilities. We start questioning, why did we become teachers? You know, we could have joined some office and you know, there is no tension there. We just go to the office, do our work and come back. That's, that's the general perception that some people have. Of course, they have their own challenges there. But here, when we are struggling with 40 students in a class with all the new rules that are coming up, where we cannot scold children, where we cannot punish children, and then there has to be output. We need to make the children understand what we are teaching. We need to make the children uh, graph what we are teaching. We need interaction in our classes. And what happens is become too demanding for certain people. And therefore, I am here to suggest some methods on how you can motivate yourself to do better. And self-motivation is very essential for everyone to maintain your enthusiasm and energy and passion for your profession. Remember, we are not in this profession for one year, two years, 10 years. We are here probably for 30 years, 40 years. And as teachers, I think till death, we, we are going to teach, isn't it? It's not that we are never going to retire. We keep teaching and we keep learning. That's what teacher is all about. It's like being a doctor. A doctor never retires. The doctor treats patients till death. And same way, I think a teacher also should be someone who serves people, serves others till his or her death. And therefore, we need to self-motivate ourselves. We need to become energetic, enthusiastic and passionate about what we are teaching to others so that our classes become interesting, right? So on this note, I want to welcome you all, those who are attending the session either live right now or we'll be uh, watching this recording later Let this small session be, uh, you know, a stepping stone for your work ethics, your integrity, and may your passion, enthusiasm, and energy increase in your classrooms and the classrooms will become a more lively place. So the first thing that we have to do is set clear goals. And you must have heard of this term, smart goals, the smart goals. Now, I'm sure many of you in many sessions have heard this smart, but I think it's one of the most well-defined stuff that I've read anywhere. So smart stands for what? It should be specific, S stands for specific, measurable, you need to measure it and attainable, not that you're thinking about something a goal which is not attainable, realistic and timely, time bound, not that we are giving unlimited time to ourselves. So smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and timely. This is the very important uh, aspect of setting goals. So we need to set goals. Without setting goals, we don't achieve anything. It's same for the teachers, same for the students. At the end of this year, I need to do this. 
at the end of five years, I need to reach this. At the end of 10 years, we need to this. We are all teachers, but to what level are we going to increase our persona in the teaching field? Are we stuck to the same thing in the past 20 years? Then I think it's time to question yourself. It is high time to question yourself. If you are stuck for the past 20, 30 years, doing the same damn stuff every day, then there is a question mark on your life. We need to move out of our classroom. The teaching doesn't happen only in the four walls of the classroom. We need to move out. So therefore, we need to set goals. We need to set goals. We need to improve our teaching methods. We need to improve constantly. No, we cannot be the same as what we were 10 years back or 20 years back. So what are we going to do? We need to improve teaching methods. The methodology has to change. We need to engage with our students. We need to become good facilitators. Our personality development should happen. It shouldn't happen that you are doing the same thing, which is now redundant. People don't refer to those techniques anymore. So therefore, we need to have a sense of purpose and we need to have clear objectives in our lives on what we need to achieve with our students and in our class and in our lives. We need to celebrate achievements. Many, many people I have seen are reluctant to celebrate achievements. I think in order to motivate ourselves, every small achievement that goes your way needs to be celebrated. Whether it is with the samosa or laddu or you know, you can devise your own methods, but recognition of the small progress that you're making should be something encouraging you to go further and further. You need to reward yourself for reaching milestones. You need to reward yourself because the reward is essential for any human being to progress. If you're not being recognized or if you yourself don't recognize yourself, uh, probably the, you don't want to, you know, you are a very introvert person or probably you, you don't think that it's an achievement for you, then you need to boost yourself. You need that positive reinforcement, reinforcement to boost your motivation. So you need to acknowledge and celebrate your achievements. No matter how small they are, you need to celebrate it. And believe it, when you are uh, the small thing, it could be a small case that you have solved in class. It could be a unique way that you have explained in class. It could be some student uh, giving you a feedback. All these are achievements, small achievements. I'll share an achievement that today, yesterday, uh, I, I had taken a trainee teacher to uh, one of the classes and uh, today when I went to the class, you know, the boy brought two chocolates. Sir, this is for those teachers who came and taught the lesson so well. And I was so happy because that teacher who came into the class as a trainee was able to make an influence in their class. And this boy had bought chocolates for them saying that, sir, this is that. So students appreciate you for doing something very beautiful. So and so and I mean the boy, uh, in his you know in his innocence and honesty for rewarding that person brought the chocolates. So why don't we reward ourselves? So it is positive reinforcement. These are small things. I mean you may take it as a small thing. Okay, this boy bought this, but it is something very beautiful. I was really touched by the boys, and I told uh, the trainees what comes. I see this is what the boy did. He has bought chocolates for you. And he appreciated the way that you, and they were happy about it. And now what is going to happen when I told them this, they're going to do a better job tomorrow when they come to class. So that is positive reinforcement, celebrating small achievements, then only progress happens. So we need to appreciate people and we need to boost their confidence. Then only they will improve. Continuous learning. This is one fact that I have realized. Continuous learning. <clears throat> In the past three years, I'm sure, the learning curve has increased drastically for teachers. We were in a cocoon, I would say, in the past 20 or 30 years. We were in a cocoon, teaching the same thing over and over because textbooks never changed. And suddenly what happened, the national education policy, the national curriculum framework, experiential learning, art integration, there were so many terminologies and so many uh, notifications which suddenly came so that the classrooms could be a better place. And continuous learning is the crux, or I would say, if you want to make your classes the best and you want to improve as a teacher, stay tuned to people who can mentor you. You need a good mentor, right? You need to read, you need to join courses, you need to learn from people who are better than you. It is important. So you need to get training in educational technology, in the latest teaching methods, 
talk to experienced people, you know, the words of wisdom from people who have taught 25, 30 years, you listen to them. And in that half an hour or one hour, I'm sure you are going to take back at least one point, which you carry back to the class. They may not be able to give you 10 or 20 points, but one point that if you can take from the person, I think that person who is speaking has done a good job and you have done a good job by absorbing that. So continuous learning, attend workshop, attend seminars, conferences, and especially the people whom you consider are going to give you value. See, I have a set of people whom I continuously attend. So I know that if this person is conducting, I am going to take something valuable from that person. You need to make a list of those and never miss that. So I have learned so many things from so many people. There are hundreds and thousands of sessions on YouTube and every time sessions happen. But who, what do you attend? You know that there is value in what this person is speaking, then you will attend. There is value and I can take back these. And this person, he or she is talking from his experience, not bookish knowledge. So many uh, sessions are conducted by people who have never stepped into the classroom. They don't make sense. They're talking about utopian ideas or non-practical ideas which doesn't work in a classroom. But when a teacher who is experienced or young for that matter has expertise in what he or she has actually performed in the class and that person speaks with conviction, that person speaks with examples, that person talks with anecdotes of what happens, then I think that session becomes very meaningful. So you need to attend these workshops and seminars and conferences and learn new things and that ignites your passion. Sometimes, you know, I've heard motivational quotes. Some people have this habit of collecting or writing motivational quotes. Some people have the habit of reading self-help books. So why is that? Because you are learning and you're motivating yourself. So stay updated with continuous learning. Very, very important. Seek support. Don't ever think that you are the best and you need not no support from anyone. We all need support. Every human being needs support. We need love. We need uh, empathy. We need support from everyone, not only from our colleagues, but from our management, from our students, from our parents, all the stakeholders. We need support from our family members. Unless we get our support systems in place, we are not going to perform well. So it is important that we get a supportive environment around us, not people who are backbiting, people who are having ego issues, people who are always talking negative. No, stay in the company of positive people, stay in the company of people who like challenges, stay in the company of people who say positive things and, and always aspire to do better, not people who are taking you back to the dark ages. So you need to a strong support system, be in the company of good people. Your companionship is very important. The people with whom you talk, the people whom you interact with is very important. Students are also like that. They are in bad company, you know, you see they, they are they're gone, academics is gone. They get into bad habits and nothing. They don't listen to the parents, they don't listen to the teachers. Same with adults. Same with adults. If you are in the company of a person who is always talking negative, then you also have the habit of you know doing all that and you're wasting time doing all that. We can see positive in so many things. We need to be aware of the positive things and what can be done. As Gandhiji said, no, the change begins with one person. You need to make that change. We always expect the other person to make a change. I have personally experienced this. Don't wait for others to make changes. One person can do a lot of things. We think that, sir, ek banda sochne se kya hota hai. But I've seen you start and that, you know, the road happens. The road, the journey begins with one person, a trickle of water. And then what happens? The trickle of water becomes a small river and the river gets into a sea. So this is what happens when you are in a journey of a good path. When you are doing something good, there will be a lot of good people who are going to follow you. And when the goodness over prevails, the negative thought, then there is goodness all around. And I want that this... Our schools, our classes, our society, the goodness should prevail. And so that this world becomes a happier place. We are reading so much of negative news in the media. Why? Because there is so much of negativity. And who is teaching them this negativity? Is it the schools? Is it the parents? It's a big question mark. I want you to introspect. I have introspected many times and I have always wondered, you know, when somebody commits a crime, which school must have they studied? How was that student in school? 
you know so it's it's something which we have to ponder we see so many deviational behavior in our schools and potentially these all kids if not handled properly could be you know uh, they could commit crimes so it depends so we need to seek support we need to give support to whomsoever we want it is not that always we are seeking support however weak you are you think that you are weak but you can always give support to someone and they will be indebted to you for life for giving support believe me that when there is a weak person and you give support to that person unconditionally without any you know uh, uh, expecting something in return when you give that unconditional love when you give that unconditional support you are going to be blessed with much more than what you actually expect so we need to create support system we need to create a group of people who will only think positive and work for the good of the students work for the good of the school work for the good of the society practice self compassion don't be cruel there are many people who punish themselves they are hard on themselves you need to be kind and understanding not only to others but to yourself you cannot be hard on yourself don't put all the blame on yourself sometimes things go wrong we are human beings to err is human we are not divine right that we don't make mistakes that is why we are not god we are man we are men and we are women why because we are mere mortals and we cannot expect everything to go as planned so if something doesn't go out of plan i accept it as a mistake and learn from the mistakes and do it better so we need to acknowledge the efforts of other people understand that everyone makes mistakes child or adult both and we need to move forward it's important that these negativities these failures that we have in life do not bring us down they should be learning experiences so that we become better stay organized this is one very very important thing so many technological tools have come you know those big big files redundant files which we used to be maintain has now become into a small you know probably a, we can copy it on a pen drive or it's it should be on a laptop or your mobile it or reduces the stress when you are organized you reduce the delegate plan your lessons your plan, your assignments and grading everything should be planned in advance okay when you don't plan you know plan they say failing to plan is planning to fail failing to uh, if you don't plan properly then what happens you are actually planning to fail so failing to plan is planning to fail very beautiful quote that you must have come across so many times so a well organized teacher is very very efficient teacher because they are able to handle the challenges and stay motivated if you are not organized your desks are full of paper and you know what not then you will never be able to get things done so you need to be organized then comes the focus on impact positive impact on our students don't lose focus reflect on the success stories of your students share those experiences with the present students ask those students to come and speak that you know what how they got inspired what they are doing and how things in school change their life knowing that you can make a difference can be a powerful motivator how many students uh, ex students have come to you and said sir you told me this on that day and today because of those words i am doing this you must have got uncountable or innumerable experiences like that so we cannot influence anyone but if you are in, able to influence 10% 20% 30% of your class motivate them and inspire to do them to do something which they like which they have aptitude in or probably you know bring out their hidden talents and creativities i think as a teacher you are doing a brilliant job so you need to reflect on success stories we need to tell the students that you know this success was not done in one day these are the steps so many things i have shared uh, innumerable stories i have in my you know that box uh, which is stored in, here up innumerable stories of students who come back and tell their success stories we have the story of a person who is a, a, a leading milk supplier right now in india and he started his business about 5 or 6 years back maximum and he started by selling these milk products free of course outside our school he used to come in the car <coughs> park the car open the you know dicky the behind of the car he used to have about 100 packets and he used to give to the morning workers free of cost 
he started his journey like that. Every morning he used to get up five o'clock, six o'clock, and distribute this sample because it's a it's a tough industry. People will go to Mother Dairy or other brands. So <clears throat> some of some of you must be guessing already the brand which has started revolution in milk. They used to they are getting the milk from the farms and supplying it, and. And then they've been within four or five years, I think practically they have made inroads not only in milk, but in milk products, cheese and curd and all that. And they're doing very well, business in pros. And all this has happened in five years. So these are success stories. Many, many success stories are there. I have, we have innumerable examples. So probably that would be a session on success stories of our students and, uh, you know, so many things. So... It is not that, you know, he had a big factory and he started all of a sudden and all that. The starting was selling milk in the dicky of his car, getting up early morning and distributing it free of cost. When the taste they like, they, you know, they subscribe. That was a, and he said that he was the first delivery man. He used to get the order and he used to put the milk in the car and then deliver it himself. So this is how things start. So success story and then the progress in those four or five years. And they have built a big empire. Same, another student was recently in school and he was sharing his success story in popcorns, which is a big brand now. Ready to eat popcorns. So these are all things which, you know, people thought about and thought that, you know, you go to your ready well and you are buying 5 rupees or 10 rupees popcorn. And, you know, they may be, you know, uh, once you reach back home, the quality goes down, they put extra salt, hygiene, we don't know. Uh, the quality and then he thought about the idea if we are going to add some butter put it in a nice packet where nitrogen is filled and you know uh, and the product is clean and not touched by hands then the product can be sold and again example of people who have made it big in the last four or five years before five years we never heard of these brands of ready-made popcorn we used to have those popcorn which we had to fry in those uh, pressure cookers and so on. Now you will find that brand everywhere. So this is what happens when you know, come to know of students who are doing so well and they, uh, when we reflect on their success, it is something, you know, the it's a it's practically a rags to riches story. So knowing that you have made a difference there becomes a powerful motivator for you. So today when I go back to class, I can say, okay, see, this is the list of 100 guys who we have, we have taught in the past 20 years and see where they stand now. So that becomes a powerful motivator, not only for you, but for them, especially when that person himself comes to school and said, sir, you were responsible for this part of, you know, my personality development or ma'am, this is what you contributed in my life. And they give credit to their teachers. I always tell my students, you know, only two people are happy for your success. One is your parent and one is your teacher. The parent will always be happy for the success of the child. The teacher will also be happy. I don't know about the others. I don't know the other, but these two people will always be happy for you. And some students in their generosity, in their humility, in their happiness, they still come back to you and say, sir, this is what you have done or ma'am, this is what you have done. And that should be the focus on our impact. The impact that we are making, I think that gives you more happiness than anything, any rewards that anybody is giving you. That is the reward that a teacher has. Practice self-care. Many people are not sleeping properly. Teachers are checking late into night. They have family responsibilities, sleeping at one o'clock, getting at five o'clock, four hours of sleep. Go back to school and then so much work. Come back, so much of work. So you need physically, you need rest. Mentally, you need to be stress-free. You need to be emotionally well. You need to get enough sleep, exercise, and regularly engage in activities that bring you joy. Does gardening give you joy? Does singing give you joy? Does painting gives you joy? Does social service give you joy? Walking on the road gives you joy. Just smelling the flowers and, you know, enjoying music, that gives you joy. Playing with kids, does it give you joy? Do what gives you joy, that is important. Not that we are not machines. We are not robo. We are human beings. And as human beings, we need to engage in activities that brings us joy. Otherwise, what happens? You are you become slowly, slowly a machine. I was reading in some book that you know, slowly, slowly, the machines are you know you know the machine development. Slowly, the robo is gradually they are with AI. Of course, now they are gradually trying to become human beings. Scary, 
But you see the evolution of the machines from machines that is, you know, in the factories, a robo has been created. Now imagine with all the artificial intelligence where, uh, you know, and the cloning that can be done as human beings, everything can be fitted on. And then what happens? Now there are many countries producing robots like human beings fitted with AI. And slowly, slowly, I read in this book that the difference between human beings and AI generated robots will be marginal. We will not be able to recognize because they will resemble us. They will have emotions. They can do anything that the human being does. Right now, we were superior because our brain was powerful. Now, AI is becoming superior to us. What happens? I have a fear that they may become better than us and dominate human, human beings in the, in the future. And what is happening to human beings? We are losing our emotions and we are becoming like machines. We have stopped laughing. We have, you know, stopped emoting. We have stopped motivating. We have stopped inspiring. We are slowly, slowly turning into machines without emotions. When you read the newspaper and see so many things that is happening, how many of us really go deep into it and react? Because we, we are getting immune. We are becoming like a machine, right? Human beings were created for emotions and now the emotions is dying. And machines are developing that. So in 2050, it was just an article, but you know, these uh, science movies and uh, these uh, fiction is now becoming fact. What we saw in Star Trek and all in our childhood 20, 30 years back is now becoming a reality. So what is the science fiction, what, what we are thinking as a fiction is becoming a reality. So what is happening? This movie said that in 2050, the resemblance between human being and machine will be so marginal that it is very difficult to distinguish that who is human being and who is a machine. Because this is what is happening to us. So engage yourself as human beings, engage yourself in activities, laugh, get angry, you know, be happy, you know, emotions. And if you are just walking like a machine, coming back, going to school, coming and then, you know, doing the household work, you are a machine. So this is what, uh, why are we turning into machines? Because we are not taking care of ourselves physically, mentally and emotionally. All three aspects are important, physical, mental, and emotional. Unless we are getting this proper balance, we will not be able to engage ourselves in joyful teaching or learning. We need to create happy classroom. And that is only possible when we are happy. When we laugh with the student, they will also laugh. If you have never laughed in the classroom, the students most likely will be laughing at you. They will be laughing at you behind your back probably, but not laughing with you. So there's a difference. When students are laughing at you, that means that is little derogatory. They are actually, in other words, insulting you or they don't respect you when people laugh at you. If they laugh with you, that means they are happy. That is what happy classrooms is. You have said something and you know they are doing some activity and they're all happy and joyful doing that. That's what we have to do. We don't want kids who laugh at us. We want kids who laugh with us. And who is generating that laughter? The teacher. So that is why in that session, previous session, I told humor, bring a meaning about humor, not at the cost of insulting anyone. But if you are generating humor in your classrooms, I think that's one of the best ways to engage your students in better output. Stay passionate. It's important. We cannot lose passion. Never, ever. If we lose passion, our students will be the first people to recognize that we don't have passion. Oh, sir or ma'am comes, writes the date and without even wishing starts the class. I have heard this so many times that, sir, you know, this particular teacher comes and then what happens? Just goes to the board, writes the date and then starts off. No good morning, no good afternoon, nothing. Whether the boys or uh, students are standing, sitting, no. Many teachers have shared their stories of their schools of experiences where there have been teachers who are teaching for 20, 25 years, teaching the same thing which probably they have learned in their college. They are referring to those notes which they have studied. 30 years back, redundant things. So, remember why you became a teacher. Did you become a teacher by choice or did you become a teacher by chance? I think that's one of the basic questions that I ask everyone who enters the teaching profession. Are you here by chance? that you didn't get anywhere and so tell over, hey, let's try out teaching. Are you there? Then most probably you will not be happy if you're there by chance. <laughs> if you're here 
by choice that I want to become a teacher. So that is a person who will be happy and who will bring about happiness in the classroom. And if you have come by chance also, kindly make an effort to create that happy environment. Otherwise, it's drudgery. You are coming into the class, you are spending 30 years of your life without smiling, without giving any happiness or without being happy yourself. That is going to take a toll of your health. That is going to take a toll of your health. So you need to reconnect your passion for education, try to do research, find out ways the students enjoy and therefore passion or for the, if you're passionate and you're teaching something passionately, that passion is infectious. The students also start learning that. So passion is a very powerful motivator that can drive you to excel in your teaching. Mindfulness and relaxation, very important. Spending a few moments in silence. Many of the families that I know have the family prayer. A family prayer is a time when people come together and pray. In many families, I've seen early morning, you know, they are praying and then they are going to their school or work. Or if you go to the parks, there are people who are doing yoga, breathing exercises. All this is practice of mindfulness and relaxation. Yoga is very good. Walking on the street is good. Sitting by yourself and relaxing is very important. Self-awareness is very important to improve our overall well-being. And that leads to higher motivation levels. In many schools, they have yoga. In many schools, they have meditation. Why? To relax the mind of the child. And they are ready for their classes. When you start your morning assembly with meaningful yoga exercises, where the mind relaxes, uh, breathing techniques, when breathing techniques are introduced in your morning assembly in your classroom or meditation techniques are introduced to calm the mind, the students become relaxed. Otherwise, you know how the students are. They are always hyperactive. They want to, you know, talk and disturb others or, you know, share ideas, which is a very good thing. But at the same time, that causes disturbance when you want to give a lecture on something. So we need to engage them in a controlled manner, not uncontrolled. You know, it's like the atom bomb. If you are controlling the reaction, you can produce electricity. You can control that fission reaction, then it becomes controlled, then you can generate electricity. But if it's an uncontrolled chain reaction, it leads to an explosion, bomb, which leads to destruction. And that's what happens in a classroom. If you are able to control the dynamics of the students, control that energy, then that energy can be converted into something useful, productive work. But if that energy is not controlled in the class, then that leads to explosion. In our terms, not an actual explosion, but that could lead to indiscipline. It could lead to increase of volume of speaking. It could lead to abusive language. It could, be, it could lead to bullying. It could uh, lead to physical violence. These are things which happens when the mind is not relaxed. So relax, relaxing the mind is very important. Controlling the mind of students, controlling the dynamic of the class is a very important aspect of the teacher. So that it doesn't become uncontrolled and, you know, like a bomb explodes, then it becomes dangerous. Seek feedback. Ask for feedback always. When we are having parent-teacher meeting, a lot of parents come and give you feedback. Don't get hyper on listening to that. Accept it. There may be one parent out of 10 saying certain things which you may not like, but accept it. Say, okay. This is what you're saying. Probably you are right. Let me make an effort to improve. There will be obviously a lot of people giving you positive feedback, which can actually boost your confidence. So constructive feedback sometimes is difficult that somebody tells you, although they may be knowing at the heart that, you know, you are a very good teacher, but they will not be telling you. But if you are able to tell that, you are actually improving that teacher to grow. So if you have a colleague who is doing good work, today I urge you, please go to that teacher and say, sir or ma'am, I like the way that you presented that. It was very good. Appreciation helps. Appreciation helps. Why are we hesitating to give appreciation to others around us? Why are we uh, in our closed mindset that if we appreciate others, then, you know, how will that person think? Or why should I do it? Uh, simply, you know, you don't feel like doing it. So there are many reasons why people do it. And if you make it a habit to appreciate others on small, small things, that will give a boost to that person and you will also feel good about it that you have appreciated someone and that appreciation will come back. You have appreciated 10 people, 5 people may come back and appreciate you for something that you have done. But if you never appreciate anyone, 
they will say that, okay, this person never appreciates anything, whatever we do, uh, uh, sir or ma'am doesn't like. So constructive feedback is very, very important to give so that it motivates the other person. And then we grow as teachers. Gratitude practice very, very important. So many times we have the habit of complaining of, let's say, one thing or two things, but think of the 99 things which has been provided for us. Are you having enough money to eat food? Are you having comfortable clothes? Are you having a home? Are you having a loving family? Are you having a vehicle? Are you living in a city which is free of disease? Are you having clean water, electricity? Are you having access to food? Are you having markets nearby? These are all different, different things which we can have gratitude. Do you have fan and electricity in your school? Do you have clean water? Do you have, uh, you know, students who listen to you? Do you have a good management? Do you have good colleagues? Do you have parents who support you? All these are little, little things we need to be grateful for. If everybody cannot have everything. That's a fact of life. But what are the things that are working in favor of you? Are we thanking that? When we practice gratitude for what we have, then more goodness will come to you. Okay. So this is a very good advice that I can give you. Practice gratitude. Shift your focus from the challenges that you are facing and fo uh, shift that focus to overall motivation and satisfaction. Am I getting... What am I getting? Instead of saying, what am I not getting? What am I getting? Focus on those things. I'm working in a particular institution. What am I getting out of it? What am I getting out of it? It could be n number of things. It could be the monetary benefits. It could be non-monetary benefits. But yes, everybody is getting something. Otherwise, we will never work there. That's a fact, isn't it? We are working there because of the fact that we are getting something from there. For different people, it may be different reasons, right? And therefore, it is important that we practice this gratitude. We need to practice gratitude. Not always keep complaining about things which are going wrong. That is part and parcel of life. There are many things which go wrong, yes. But at the same time, there are many things which are going right. So let's focus from all that is going wrong to all that is right. And we keep thanking the Almighty for the goodness that He has given us and then our life starts changing dramatically. You practice gratitude and more goodness will come into you. More blessings will come into your life. That, that's, a, that's something which I have experienced. So, and obviously you get overall motivation and satisfaction. When you are a positive person, you are less stressed. You, you are a more balanced person. You don't react to things. You are more empathetic to others. More people are going to support you. You support more people. So a lot of things are going your way. Okay. And there will, if you are going to react with two situations, if you are not grateful for what you are angry at certain things, then stress builds up. And what does stress do? Stress builds up disease. Stress builds up disease. You are getting, you know, heart problems. You are getting diabetes. You are hypertension and you know what not. This is all result of stress. Of course, there are medical reasons by which we get that. I'm not denying that fact. But what I'm saying is the stress adds to our disease. If there is no stress, then what happens? 90% of disease disappears. So it's important. Gratitude. Pray to God. Pray to the Almighty. Do self-introspection. Reflect. Meditate. Be calm. Be empathetic. And as I said, support others. See, uh, motivate others so that you also, in reciprocate, you also get those qualities which you are giving to others. Okay, there is a saying which says that do unto others what you want others to do unto you. You want people to support you, you support others. You want people to love you, then you love others. So it's important. Whatever you want people to do to you, you do the same thing. You want love, you cannot be angry. Okay, you want support, you cannot leave their hand and say that you do it, I am very busy. So this is what life is all about. Life is all about reciprocity. If we are doing something, then that comes up back. You know, in the as the Hindu philosophy, the law of karma. You do good and good come back to you, isn't it? So self-motivation is a continuous process. It is not something which is for one day, two days. It's a lifelong process, continuous process. And by incorporating these steps, 
you are going to maintain a high level of motivation into your teaching career. So on this note, I want to wish you all the best. Stay motivated, stay inspired, and you are going to change the face of your classroom. So I want every educator who is listening to this session to go back to your classes energized. You know, recently CBSC brought out those teacher energized manuals. Some of you may have got about it. So we are talking about CBS energized manuals, but I would say go as energized human beings into our classrooms. People should see the difference. People should see the light from your face. Okay, ma'am or sir has become a changed person. Ma'am or sir has, is becoming better in the, in, you know, they should feel that difference. How? By energizing yourself, by motivating yourself, by doing good, by practicing gratitude, by reflecting. These are some of the steps which can be incorporated. So on this note, I want to thank all of you who are attending this session and I want to wish you all the best. All my sessions are for the betterment of educators so that the classroom becomes better. After all, we are here because of our students. And if our students are not satisfied with us, if our students are not progressing in their lives, if our students are not finding value in the lessons, then I think we are failing in our duty. We need to be responsible educators and we need to change our attitude to, you know, a sage on the stage, they say, you know, that was the Guru Kul system. The Guru was the ultimate powerful person and whatever he or she said, that was the word. You couldn't go beyond. Now, the, we, we are more like facilitators. We have to encourage learning. We, are, we need to be more friends with them. We need to be not philosophers, but facilitators of learning. Because learning can happen anytime, anywhere now with the resources being available across internet reference books. So you are not the only source of information. Please remember that. The information is available freely. Your job is to just facilitate learning. Help them in their time of need. And the uh, constructive, uh, positive human beings and help others. So on this note, I want to wish all of you a very, very progressive year and years ahead in your teaching life. Thank you and best wishes.